There are a lot of good pitchers on a Friday night slate in MLB DFS to the point where I had some issues trying to sort out how I wanted to rank out the top four guys. Because I think that although there are a lot of good pitchers, there's no one who really stands out above the crowd. I think there is a cluster of four at the top, all of whom could be the SP1 on this slate. So your job is to decide which one you want to prioritize, go through the data and decide which one you feel best about. Cause I think you can defend any of these guys being your top pitcher. Then I'll break down my rankings, but hopefully we can give you a good idea of where to go based on your process in just a bit. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel podcast network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com here to break down Friday's 11 game main slate with locks up for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for tonight. Quick note, I am recording this on Thursday night as opposed to Friday morning because my wife and I are moving for tomorrow, so could not record in the morning. I apologize for that, but make sure you check in on starters. Uh, I go to MLB.com. That is the most reliable source for that kind of stuff. Make sure the starters remain the same. No starters announced yet for the Marlins and the Royals. Didn't think that would impact things too much, so we okay glossing over that for right now. But if there are any... Injuries to hitters, injured list stints, COVID list stuff. Uh, make sure you check back on that later on. I also will not have weather for today. I've got temperatures, but no rain. So uh, go to the number of fire games and lineups page. Check out the weather there. That'll let you know if there are any hairy spots where you may need to check back later on. Before we dive into the pitching preview for this slate, quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed to get this podcast as it goes live each and every weekday. Also, of course, Austin Swain has your UFC DFS needs covered, breaking down that every Friday. I have NASCAR each Friday, except for this one, because there is no NASCAR race this week. And then, of course, we also have PGA DFS podcasts every Tuesday via myself and Brandon Gadula. So four different sports all covered in the same space. Uh, go to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy podcast feed and hit subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, sports fans, if you have not yet signed up for FanDuel Fantasy, now is the best time to do so. For users who have yet to make a deposit on FanDuel Fantasy, you can deposit today to receive two free entries. All you have to do is deposit a minimum of $10 into your FanDuel DFS account, and you will be instantly rewarded with two free vouchers. This is a limited time offer, so be sure to deposit now and play for free. Head over to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel Fantasy app today. Eligibility restrictions apply. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app for more details. Pitching preview for this Friday main slate. We've got Carlos Rodon as the highest salary pitcher on FanDuel checking in at $10,700. Uh, Clayton Kershaw is 10-5. Frankie Montas is 10-2. Framber Valdez is 10-1 with Tarek Skubal at 99. Carlos Carrasco is 97. Michael Lorenz at 95. Lucas Giolito is $9,300. Robbie Ray, 92. Pablo Lopez, assuming he is a starter for the Marlins, is 91. With John Gray, Mackenzie Gore, Zach Plesak, Adam Wainwright, and Jordan Montgomery as the others at $8,000 or higher. And there are a lot of great pitchers grouped at the top here for today. And for me, I think that there is a tier of four guys. I like Frankie Montas, Tarek Skubal, Carlos Rodon, and John Gray. I think all four of those guys are tremendous options, and I'd be okay using any of them. My top pitcher above those other three will be Frankie Montas for tonight. And Montas doesn't have the best matchup, uh, but it is a pretty good one. He's facing the Royals at home, and they're not a good offense. A 91 WRC plus against righties with a 130 ISO. The one issue is that they're not a high strikeout team. Outside of that, it's a really good situation for Monthas, pitcher-friendly park, stuff like that. And Monthas himself is pitching well. I was a bit worried. When I first started digging into his data and saw that across his past six starts, that can that's because sliders are a good, a good strikeout-friendly pitch. But Montas has still been fine in this stretch. He has a 29% strikeout rate in those six starts. His skill interactive ERA, 2.69. And it does come with some game-by-game -game volatility. But that was, you know, his most recent start was a two-strikeout start on the road against a low-strikeout team. That's a one bad start in a stretch. He recently faced the Red Sox and the Astros at home. Both those teams are also low strikeout teams, but he had 12 strikeouts and in 13 innings with three earned runs allowed across those two matchups. I think we'll see Montas pitch deep in the game. I think he'll pitch pretty well. There's a lot of safety here. And if he gets some extra strikeouts, the upside is there too. 
I've got Montas projected for a 7.2 strikeouts for tonight, which is more than enough for me to make him the top guy of the night. So on a loaded slate, Frankie Montas is still my number one pitcher of the day. The second spot behind Montas is pretty tough because they could justify putting any of Tarek Skubal, Carlos Rodon, or John Gray here. All of them are worthy. I'm going to give the sled edge to Scooble. And Scooble is the only one of the, that group at home. He's facing the Rangers, and they're not a bad team against lefties. They have a 118 WRC plus and a good amount of power. But it's not necessarily something I expect to stick around. And they're not outliersly low with strikeouts either. Scooble's getting a lot of strikeouts himself right now. He's been the, lowering his sinker usage his past six starts and throwing more sliders. That is a tremendous combo for DFS. And not surprisingly, it is leading to a lot of strikeouts. Scoople has a 30% strikeout rate in that time. He has a 2.74 skill interactive ERA, which ranks second on the slate behind just Monthas. The one issue that Scoople has had is hard contact. So if you think that the Rangers keep up the quality they've shown against lefties, you could downgrade Scoople here for sure. And I totally see that argument, but it hasn't hurt him yet. We did see Scooble let up four runs last time out, but that was against the Jays. If you're a lefty against the Jays, you just kind of chuck and pray at that point. It's the worst matchup you could have as a lefty. But even if you include that Jays game, Scooble has a 2.50 ERA in that time. He has uh, three times with five-plus shutout innings. He's hit double-digit strikeouts uh, in that time, and he had nine in another. So I think that Scooble does enough to hit sit second right ahead of Rodon and Gray for today. So I've got Frankie Montas one, Tarek Scooble two. The fun thing about tonight's salaries is that it means I don't have to decide where I want to rank Rodon and Gray because Rodon is 10-7, Gray is $8,600. And if they're that close in evaluation for me, I can just take the discount and go with John Gray as my top pitcher, my top value for the night, my number three overall pitcher. Gray's facing the Tigers, which is obviously an elite matchup. They have a 69 WRC plus against righties with an 095 ISO and a 24% strikeout rate. You could not concoct a better matchup in a lab for a pitcher, and Gray is good enough to take advantage of a plus spot. His velocity has been stabilized over his past seven starts, and in the seven starts, a lot of strikeouts, 27% strikeout rate in that time. He's hit double-digit strikeouts twice, both of which have come within his past three starts. We also saw Gray get eight in another. So eight-plus strikeouts, three separate times, double digits twice. That's a really good threshold, a good upside for a pitcher. Some of the other stuff in the profile for Gray is less than ideal, like he's walking a lot of guys, and that could be a downside, but I'm not sure it matters in this specific matchup with Detroit. He did have uh, double-digit strikeout games against the White Sox and the Rays. Neither is a good offense against righties, but they're not as bad as Detroit. So I wouldn't push back on you, honestly. If you decided that you want to put John Gray number one tonight, above Montas, above Scoobal, above Rodon, I think it's that good of a spot. This is a value play I will absolutely be using here. To me, the ones that use value, I think that especially on a slate where I have three studs, I can be okay using. I might not get there, but for tonight with Gray specifically being that value play, I will use him. I think that there is enough upside there to chase it and feel good about him. So Montas one, Scooble two, and John Gray tonight for me on FanDuel. Let's move now to stacks. And the Padres earlier this week were at Wrigley when we had the wind games, very hot temperatures, winds blowing out. Now they get 89 degree temperatures at Coors Field or 93 degrees at Coors Field. So once again, the San Diego Padres, a, an elite stack for tonight. They're facing Kyle Freeland, and Freeland is searching, tinkering right now. He's trying to find the right pitch mix. Over the past five starts, Freeland has cut back on his changeups, and that has not been the answer yet. He has a 4.86 skill interactive ERA in that time. He has a 44% hard hit rate with a 47% fly ball rate. We have still seen Freeland work deep in games, and he had a great start against Atlanta, a really tough team against lefties at home recently. Got a bit lucky in that game, though, because he let up a 46% hard hit rate. He probably should have gotten knocked around a bit more than he actually did. Freeland is not someone we need to avoid at Coors Field, and it's especially true when the temperature is as warm as it is. It's actually the warmest game on the slate based on the forecast on Thursday night. The Padres, pretty good against lefties with a 117 WRC+, plus, so I feel good being about being high on them here. So the Padres, for sure, a very good stack. And obviously, we'll be in on Manny Machado and Luke Voigt, 
I think it's worth touching on Jorge Alfaro and Hassan Kim briefly. Alfaro, if he plays, is likely to bat sixth. I would bet that Kim is probably seventh. Kim, a 45% fly ball rate against lefties this year. He's actually stolen three bases off lefties too, which is pretty high number against the lefty. 10% strikeout rate, so checks all the key boxes. Alfaro has hit for a ton of power against lefties since the start of last year. He does still strike out a lot, but between Alfaro and Kim, really good quality op- options uh, beyond the obvious guys within this stack. And again, I think we've seen this quite a bit so far this year, but there aren't the salaries are not super restrictive, even at cores. Void is Void thirty six hundred dollars. Uh, Machado is forty three, and then you get down to Kim at twenty nine, and Alfaro still scrolling, still scrolling twenty five hundred dollars for tonight. So not too shabby if you want to stack the Padres while still paying at the pitcher. Number two, I stacked against Madison Bumgarner all year long, and it's had mixed results. Pretty tough to start, but things have been more kind to us recently. So I'm going to give it a go again tonight and stack the twins against Bumgarner. The twins don't have the best numbers against lefties right now, but part of that is that the key guys like Byron Buxton, Carlos Correa in this time, I don't think they'll lag behind for the full season against lefties. The one thing they have done well against lefties is loft the ball. And that meshes well with Bumgarner. He's been going with more changeups across his past nine starts which does, in theory, help control righties, but it hasn't aided his peripherals at all because Bumgarner is still letting up a 47% hard hit rate with a 44% fly ball rate. And when you pair that with a 16% strikeout rate, it means he's letting up a lot of dangerous balls in play. And that has hurt Bumgarner at times because he let up three home runs to the Dodgers, he let up two to the Cubs, and he's had some issues beyond just the homers as well. The roof will be closed tonight in Arizona, so that is one downside, but I still want the Twins, and I think that they're in a good enough spot to stack them here against Bumgarner. And I want to be behind Jose Miranda within those stacks, because about two weeks ago, Miranda got demoted to AAA and got called up right back up almost right away when Royce Lewis got hurt. And since coming back, Miranda's been kind of a different batter, 245 ISO, 53% hard hit rate overall. He's striking out more than you'd like, but that's really good power uh, for DFS. So you look at Miranda, his minor league profile, pretty good too. And if you can get that for $2,200, helps you get to Buxton, Correa. I like that a lot. So Jose Miranda, uh, Jose Miranda, uh, definitely a a play I want to build around for today. Sticking in that same game, I'd rather not stack Arizona against the lefty because a lot of their best batters are lefties. So it's not optimal to stack them against one, but it is kind of a tough slate for stacking despite being an 11 game slate. And I do think we should give them a swing for tonight. They're facing Devin Smeltzer. Smeltzer has a 2.38 ERA this year. So it's really good. I'm just not sure how long he can keep that up. He's letting up a ton of balls in play, with just a 13% strikeout rate. And when you combine that with his walk rate, he's letting up a ball in play about 80% of the plate appearances against him. Of those 80%, 41% are hard hit, 44% are in the air. That should lead to issues as the sample expands. For the most part, it hasn't yet, and part of that could be matchups because he faced Detroit twice in there. He had Kansas City, uh, or faced Detroit once, had Kansas City twice, he had the Guardians once, and Arizona is also a bad team against lefties, so we're not shifting things a ton here. But it says to me that good individual batters might be able to hit him. I think Arizona has some of those at least. So Smeltzer let up three home runs last time out, let up two at the start before that. So he's not infallible. I think Arizona here makes a lot of sense, even if I'd rather stack them against a righty. So not optimal, but I do think it works on this specific site. And Christian Walker, the obvious guy here, I would go with Ketel Marte if he were to play, though he has a sore hamstring. I'm not sure if he'll go. Carson Kelly just came off the IL. That's one more. Uh, right-handed bat in that lineup who can bop lefties. Jordan Luplo will likely hit leadoff. He typically, when he does start, plays until the eighth or ninth inning when he starts. So it's not as bad as like a giant situation where a guy may start and play three or four innings and then dip. I don't think it's that. So I actually feel better about Luplo than I do about a lot of guys who could leave for a pinch hitter, these lefty banging specialists. But those three, Luplo, um, 
Kelly and then Walker, all three really good options. If you get Marte in there, cool. Um, but you know, even if he's not in there, still got three pretty solid guys you could turn to, make it a four, three, one kind of situation. I think that works for sure. Let's go to things to watch here. I don't mind Rodon at all. He's facing the Pirates. Love that matchup. Uh, just kind of got squeezed because it's a good slate for pitching. The reason that I bumped Rodon down was because he hasn't seemed to have as much juice recently. His velocity did pop back up his last time out. So I'm willing to use him, but a little bit of funkiness in his recent profile. So that's why I'm lower on him, having fourth, but still a solid fourth and the fourth I'm willing to use, but would rank him below Gray and the two studs in Monthas and Scooble. I think you could consider the Giants in that same game for stacking. They're facing the righty Zach Thompson. There's also a lefty Zach Thompson. One's a K, one's an H. That's so very confusing, but the righty Zach Thompson for the Pirates. And that's a guy we can totally target. Uh, the reason I didn't get there in the top three is that Thompson has been weirdly good against lefties this year, and it's a pretty lefty-heavy lineup. So I'll still like it, uh, but that did turn me off a bit. So the Giants, the number four stack for me tonight. I'm not sure what to think about the Yankees here. They're facing Ross Stripling, who has good underlying numbers, but even when you look at him just as a starter, he's not a big strikeout guy, which gives you some leeway to stack the Yankees here. He could struggle as the sample expands. I just, I don't think I'm fully in here. I think that he's, I'm a believer enough in his talent to not be super high on the Yankees. So they'll be fifth at best for me. And I wouldn't be shocked if they wind up being a bit lower. I just ignore them altogether because I feel better about the Giants in addition to the three stacks we discussed in the primary section. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls for Friday night. The boring one is Manny Machado. He's at Coors Field. It's awesome weather for hitting. He's got a good matchup against the lefty. Sweet. Sign me up for Manny Machado as our boring home run call for tonight. The fun one, I will go with Jose Miranda. Again, facing off against Bumgarner, the lefty. Lets a lot of fly balls, a lot of hard contact. Miranda, a lot of uh, impactful contacts, and C came back up too. So I think he checks all the boxes uh, as a, a fun home run call. So the home run calls for Friday, Manny Machado and Jose Miranda. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. Again, make sure you check back on stuff later on since this was recorded ahead of time to make sure pitchers and if pitchers stay the same, make sure weather doesn't change and make sure the, the hitters I discussed wound up going in the IL after discussing them for tonight. Again, don't forget to subscribe to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed to get a UFC podcast from Austin Swain. It's UFC Austin for this week. So who better to get your UFC advice from than Austin Swain himself here on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. NASCAR back next week, as is the PGA. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again on, on Tuesday. No, uh, no podcast Monday due to Juneteenth. So off Monday, back again Tuesday for more MLB DFS. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.